Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, you guys, back at you. Group three's rocking. I'm excited to have Aaron Pearson here today and his boy, Aiden Fishbone. Fish <laughs> Fishbine. Fishbine. He's on the camera <laughs> with us today, rocking this thing. Uh, had him in the, the office to do a little whiteboarding on some funnel work, and now it's the interview. Um, Aaron's a credible brand strategy expert, a social media guru, a marketing driver. Uh, he runs a business, and he's an entrepreneur. Him and Aiden have started an agency. Let's start there. Aaron, tell us a little bit about your agency and what you guys are up to. Yeah, so about, uh, well, let's see, the beginning of this year, 2016, we decided to do a, a branding workshop for um, digital entrepreneurs. That was in uh, Manhattan, New York. So Aiden and myself and another partner um, put that together. And, and from that workshop, I mean, it was a, it was a big success. We had you know, a handful of entrepreneurs that were like really engaged. And um, we did this workshop. It ended up turning into some business. So we got some business from it, and, and from that is really where we decided, okay, maybe we should um, really get more intentional on starting an actual agency. So that's how the agency was born. So our agency right now, which is the Vitals Agency, because um, we're all about checking your, your business's vitals. We're more of a business development company than I would say um, a creative executable company. We really focus on the business areas for growth and opportunity, brand development, strategy. Um, you know, the website is just a, a form, right? It's a form of that of, of that manifested. So we really start at the initial intention phase before we do any of the manifestation of what that actually looks like. So that's really our differentiating value um, from an agency standpoint is we get really critical on um, on that initial foundation building of building a brand, knowing your customers, and going from there. Phenomenal, Aaron. I met Aaron here at Infusionsoft. Uh, he's helped me with a few clients that he was supporting. I in turn supported them with the product here, helping them get signed up. He took it to the next level. Uh, a few of those clients are fully rocking it with us. So I'm appreciative uh, of our relationship there, that partnership, him helping me. Um, and, and there's gonna be more of that down the road because Aaron's gonna help me get my podcast going and a bit of my web presence. Uh, yeah, awesome Aaron. Awesome. Tell me about your, your background though. How'd you get into this stuff? So, uh, man, that's a long story. I mean, I was always good at art. I was always good at uh, visual communication. So uh, in about, I think it was 2005, I went to art school. And that's where I started learning kind of the fundamentals of design, um, visual communication, marketing, advertising. And I mean, it was just like, it was almost natural to me. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I tried working for somebody for a short period of time, but I'm just unemployable, man. I have to go out and, and do my own thing. Like I would rather spend the time building my own dreams than, you know, than, than working for the man, right? Did you just jab at me? Yeah, no. <laughs> I love these men here. No, 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 no dude. I mean, I here's the thing, that, dude. If you, if you feel like you're a part, like, and I've, and I've, I mean, I, my clients still have dreams, so it's yeah. my job to help them meet their dreams. Um, but I like the freedom, I like the lifestyle of what I've been able to build. I mean, part of why you like my content is because I travel all over the world. You know, Aiden and I are in London, we're in New York, we're in Portland, like we were crab fishing less than a week ago, you know, <laughs> catching, catching crab and eating them. I mean, that is a lifestyle that um, I wanted to incorporate into my business. And we've done that, you know? And, and when you work for somebody 40 hours or 60 or 80 hours a week, it's really hard to do that. It's hard to have that freedom. So um, for me, like I had to get really clear on what I wanted. You know, what do I want out of my life? How does my career look? Does it look like me working in front of a computer for 10 hours a day straight, seven days a week? Yeah. Or does it look like three hours a day in front of the computer, just landing down, checking emails, the rest of the time in another country I've never been in with a camera in my hand? Yeah. I prefer the latter, right? So, um, and I really like working with different customers. Like, you know, if you work for a job, you get stuck in this like, uh, this Groundhog's Day type thing where like you're doing the same thing over and over again, repeating itself. When you're working in strategy with you know tons of different clients, um, business is, is all very similar, but the activities that you're doing can be very different. So yeah. it's always exciting, it's always new, and uh, that's why I, I pursued um, entrepreneurship and consulting as my primary vocation. Love it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you've got that, that style and you can pivot. Uh, I'm blessed to have this place with the freedom and the autonomy. Um, this place you know, is killer. Yeah, we, I mean, we I would, march a little bit differently, but no, I totally yeah. hear what you're saying, and especially with all of the entrepreneurs that I interact with and our partners. Um, yeah. Tell me this, Aaron, where, where do you see businesses right now making mistakes in branding and social media? What are three things that people are doing incorrectly right now in a broad question? Uh, three things. I mean, I think the first thing 
the first and most important thing is not actually knowing who their customer is. A lot of entrepreneurs, they create a product centered around what they think the market needs, what they, what they personally want, and they don't listen to their customer enough. So, like truly knowing and identifying who your customer is, you know, what are their interests, not just their demographics and their age yeah. and their incomes and shit like that. I'm talking about like, you know, um, what brands do they currently associate with? What type of um, uh, technology do they use? What type of news feeds are they subscribed to in their social media channels, right? Are you a wired guy or are you more of a verge type of person, mm -hmm. right? Like you can tell a lot about uh, a persona of a person just by really understanding um, the types of interests and activities and personalities that they have. So, and, and that's something that we, that's something that I do. That's something that I really specialize Target. in is, is trying to figure out who is your actual customer. Who's the person that's gonna give you money? Because if you don't align your brand with the customer who has money, you don't have a business, you have a hobby that you're sinking a lot of money into. So the more that you understand the customer and understand you know, what are their pains and gains and how you can provide solutions for them, the better you can create a product that's actually going to succeed. That's why 90% of businesses fail, is because they don't truly understand their customer. That's fire, that's number one, target, love yeah, it. I agree, yeah. That's number two. Time. Um, number three, I think. Wait, what was number two? Hold on, what was number two? Oh, number two. <laughs> <laughs> number two, I would say, um, is is probably a, 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 just a brand disconnect in general. So, um, a lot of companies they will hire tons of different subcontractors or even independent entrepreneurs. They'll hire a lot of different people to focus on different modalities or different things yep. within their company. Um, they get inundated with emails. They're not necessarily project managers. Their main focus should be bringing in revenue. Um, and they're spending the majority of time managing 20 different vendors to help them build a website, design a logo, run their Facebook ads, <laughs> do their automation, whatever, whatever, right? So they get stuck with this like superhero syndrome, right? Of like, okay, I've got to manage all of this shit and I only have so much time in the day. So um, they don't delegate, they're very inconsistent with their um, with their ability to grow their business. Would you and say it, systems there, a lack of systems? or A lack of systems, okay. yeah, a lack of systems. Love it. That would probably be the best way to describe it. Go three. Um, man, this is totally on the fly. I mean, usually, typically, number one is kind of my, uh, kind of my biggest thing. I guess, uh, you know, the other thing is really not willing to take risks, um, not committed to the results. So um, risks and commitment, to me, they, they do kind of go hand in hand. Uh, I mean, if you are trying to start a business or you're a business owner, like you have to be willing to not get paid. You have to be willing to to take the risks that are needed um, to go the extra mile. And and most people don't aren't committed enough to their success to where they can get into this uncomfortable state where they can actually grow their business. Like you should be uncomfortable. Like you should not. If you're comfortable and you're growing like super slow, like there's something wrong. Um, so comfort within social media and that branding and getting out there with your message. That's a part of it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to be, I mean, the real thing is, is just committed. Like, if you're committed, you're willing to take risks. If so you're, you're saying committed, you're committed there. If you are committed to the end result of, okay, I want to make 100K a year, or I want to have 10,000 email subscribers, or whatever it is that your goal actually is, if you're committed to it, then you don't stop until you get there, right? Love it. You don't get, you know, you don't shut out at four o'clock and say, okay, like, yeah. I'm done for the day. Like, you're not even close to scratching the surface. Okay. Um, so, being able to take risks, being committed, that's gotta be. Love it. Okay, that's, maybe I can just give you six, right? <laughs> right. No, it's great. So, I mean, we talked Target, we talked about the commitment, we talked about going all in and not being afraid there. Um, and I see that a lot with, with social media specifically, small business owners being afraid to get out there with their brand, their message, that transparency. Uh, great, Aaron, that's phenomenal. Yeah. What's the deal with Snapchat and Instagram stories for small business and for business right now? Why are people not using it effectively? Do they not get it? Or what, what's happening there? You're I think a lot it of it. I think a lot of it's fear. To be honest, I think most people, um, when it comes to, to either live video, so like uh, yeah. Facebook Live, or Instagram video, or Snapchat, it's just it's fear. They don't know what to say in front of a the camera. They're not um, articulate enough, or maybe they just don't. They're not confident in themselves, right, to go out there and do it. So I think there's a huge like fear barrier there because everyone's like, do it, do it, do it, and they're like, well, I'm not this guy. You know, they're comparing yeah. themselves to somebody else. I can't do it like them. Um, and maybe they do, maybe they don't have to. To me, I always go back to your audience. It depends on the business that you're in. If the business that you're in, and, and, and those customers that have your money potentially are on those platforms, then you need to be on those platforms. Yes. If the business that you're in and the customer is customers not are. on the platform, yeah, right. then it. don't fucking worry about it. But in all honesty, like Target. video, yeah. So, so, so you can go back to Target, but like 
video is something that I think everyone should incorporate with their business because it's the best way to tell a story, it's the best way to convey a message and to really create an emotional connection between you and your potential customers. So video is like the most real, raw and authentic, like I messed up a few times in this video, but it shows that I'm human. I don't care, I love it. Yeah, but no, it's, I'm not human, point, I'm not, right you know now. what I mean? I'm Stay not, there, yeah. storytelling, mm -hmm. effectiveness. Yeah. The rough storytelling, the lack Dude, of storytelling and content. We as humans identify with stories. I mean, if, go to any, play any TED Talks, any TED Talk presentation, every single presenter will start with a story. When I was 13 years old, this happened, you know, and then it starts leading up to their main content. People identify with stories. It's a great way to hook the attention of your audience no matter what business that you're in. You know, you find the, um, the, the old way of, of advertising, promoting yourself was, was marketing features, right? Yeah. My features, I, we do this, 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 yeah. this. So Infusionsoft, we provide, you know, we do automation, we do this, we do this. Okay, well actually what Infusionsoft does is you provide, um, you give me, you empower me to live the lifestyle that I want to live because of the technology that we created. So what we're doing is we're pulling on the emotional heartstring of my lifestyle being enhanced through yeah. the technology Small rather business. than all the little features that Infusionsoft has to provide. So that's just an example. The old way of doing it was like, you know, we would tell people, you know, how our brand is. Now brands really need to be experienced and they experience them through stories, they experience them through connecting on an emotional level. That's amazing. What, tell us a little bit about your podcast and then let's talk a little bit about what you two are working on and who your target is. So three prong question there. All right. Tell us about the podcast first. Podcast is uh, Branding Like a Boss with season one. Um, you can see it on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Um, I've abbreviated Like a Boss to LAB, so now it's Branding Lab for season two. Um, season two is gonna be on those same distribution channels um, with uh, the addition of YouTube, so we'll be doing some video content as well just to leverage another distribution channel. Uh, but, you know, at first the podcast was a five-part series of me talking about branding, sharing my experience, and then I, I told them, I said, listen, if you, if you really like this content you want me to continue, let me know and I'll continue the show. And it ended up being like 43 episodes for season one, <laughs> and uh, it was amazing. But I had to cut out because of some of the other things that I'm focusing on, right? So um, the podcast was a way for me to kind of give back. It's yeah. a way for me to, um, you know, make a, an impact, share my views and my philosophies with a larger audience more than I can do just on a one-on-one -on -one basis, right? Yeah. Like right now, we're able to share this with hundreds of people. Whereas if we were just having this conversation behind closed doors, <laughs> you know, awesome. it'd be exhausting <laughs> for me to do that a hundred times. <laughs> you know, so the podcast is a, is a medium for doing that. Um, but I had to refocus to um, help you know build our agency, which is really where um, we make our, our money is is in doing that. Um, I don't know if that was the third part. No, or you go there. You're right there. Who's so, your target with that? Who's working with you? Yes. So I'm gonna push people to you. Who is it? So well, I mean. You know, and I'll just be, I'll be honest because I'm not, uh, you know, I don't mind, but I mean, our minimum level of engagement of customers starts at $20,000. So we work with companies that typically have C-suite executives, CMO, CEO, CFO, um, marketing directors, things like that, um, at least a million a year so in net revenue. mid-sizing up, really. Yeah, mid-sizing up. I mean, we've helped companies go from zero to Fortune 500 in two years. So um, they actually, one of our clients hit Inc. 500 two years in a row with 935% growth which is like ridiculous, just absolutely ridiculous. They're, they're local here as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's really our ideal client. And what we do is we have this three process, um, this, this three prong approach to our process. Uh, first, we do a brand audit where we get a pulse and a, and a baseline of where they actually are in their business right now. Yeah. What is their social engagement like? What is their list at? Where is their traffic? Where are they getting their business? What is their onboarding process? What types of systems and technology do they use? What are all their revenue streams? So once we get an audit figured out as far as where they, where they are currently, we check their vitals, hence the name Vitals Agency. Um, we check their vitals. Then we do what we call a brand discovery. And that's where we identify where they want to go moving forward. This is more of an affirmative exercise. So we carve out who's their ideal client profiles. Um, what are your brand attributes? How do we best communicate to them? What is the look, feel, voice, and tone that best resonates with that, uh, that target audience, right? Then we go over um, different revenue, additional revenue models, uh, additional systems, and awareness, which is marketing and advertising. So that's the second part of our three part process. The third part is the creative execution. Yeah. So we don't design shit until we have, have gone through done. all of yeah. that strategy right there initially up front. So most companies, most agencies, they'll come to, a, well, 
you would go to a company and say, hey, I need a website. And they'd say, okay, and they start designing and then they send you a, a, a proof of the page and say, well, how does it look? And then you would say, well, I need you to make all these changes. Well, we don't do that. We go through all of this strategy and intention phase first. So by the time we show you the first draft, you're like, shit, that's exactly what we talked about. This is perfect. So you can actually execute properly. Yeah, yeah so we yeah. execute properly and that's, that's how we do that, yeah. What are your three big things right now that you're working on? I'm gonna get to my big three in a minute, you guys, but wrap up with that. Maybe you, you had mentioned to me earlier that you've got a big three for your business. I'm good with that too. Yeah, so I actually big, like that one more than a daily big three. Yeah, daily. so the big three for my business is, um, and this is what I think every solopreneur or digital entrepreneur needs to focus on. And I'm talking about specifically in the realm of digital business, okay? So like, yeah, you have a website, you're building a list, things like that. Types of customers that would use Infusionsoft need to focus on these three things. Number one is if you're at the level that I'm at, you need to make sure that the quality of the work that's coming from your organization is at the highest degree, right? Like nothing can pass quality. through unless you have good quality, right? Like. Your systems are built, your you know, quality has to be the shit. Our designs are always gonna be good, you know, like we know that, but there's a standard. So my job as the CEO or the owner is to make sure that that standard is always met. Number two is building my brand. So doing things like this, writing books, yeah. writing blogs, doing podcasting, doing things that are filling that top funnel, right? That, that start getting people into my list or into my world or my ecosystem. That's number two. So my days are divided into these three things. Uh, number three, and this is the most important part, is bringing in revenue. As the owner, I have <laughs> I got to be it. bringing in revenue. Results. So yeah. here we go. So we've got quality, right? Um, we've got uh, brand. The, the brand. An element, yeah. Yep, the brand, and then the actual revenue. And those are the three main pillars that I try to focus on. Now, it's not always perfect. Yeah. Sometimes I get in and I have 30 emails or 100 emails that I have to respond to. But, you know, there's... If, if you're living in those three areas of your business, you won't have these peaks and valleys of like, okay, I had a good month this month and a bad month next month, yeah. because you're, you're focusing on revenue on a daily basis. You're focusing on building your brand on a daily basis. And you're focusing on the quality of your work. So those are the three like main daily activities that I focus on. Guys, that's the real hustle. That's fire, I love it. What are you reading right now? And then the last question is, what technology are you into? Which piece of technology is helping you? in your day-to-day. -day. What are you reading? What technology is useful right now? All right, so um, what I'm reading right now is Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Mm -hmm. um, he is, uh, man, he's an, just Google Simon Sinek. Hey, did you come to that icon with me and we saw him speak? Or heard him speak? Did I have you at that icon? What was that, what? two years ago? Yeah. You Probably. Maybe he, maybe it was. Maybe I wasn't even paying attention at the time. But you know, it's funny because like it's I a because session. because I've heard him before, and then I didn't really put the pieces together until about yeah. a month ago. And then since then, um, I've just been consuming his content like a freaking crackhead. But um, I, I don't read. It's good. I I audio book at one and a I half work. times or two times because I just. I don't the have power. the time. I also have a wife and two kids, so yeah. you know life is, is busy and I travel a lot. So I just, I plug in the audio and, and I, I crush that out. Um, so what systems am I using? Or just a technology piece in general. It could be something for film or audio, video production, whatever. I mean, honestly, my favorite piece of technology has gotta be my phone. <laughs> it's gotta be my phone. It's gotta be this, this big, massive iPhone, you know, uh, iPhone 6S Plus. Did you like uh, the, the recent update? You know, the recent update was, uh, it was kind of weird at first, but I'm getting used to it, I you think. like the lasers and all the balloons? Yeah, I, I didn't know how to do that, but yeah, he sent me a laser in the text message. I was like, whoa, dude, let me see if, let me see if I can <laughs> actually show that on the you. camera. Uh, that was so cool, hold on. Oh no, well, it won't I think it's a one-time show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah. So, no, but my phone, because you can do video from it, you can do live streaming, I mean, I, I literally what, what can else? run Everybody's it. got a phone, though. Give me something else there. I get that. I get that. Give me something Most people else. underutilize it, though, I think. Well, most people do the, the simple, like, okay, I'm just going to scroll through Facebook. Well, instead of just reading other people's stuff, like, try using it to create an artifact that you can put online to promote yourself. You know, that's that's what I would say. Use your phone as a as a tool, um, not just as a consumption. You know, uh, receiver. Well done. So well done. That well would be done. It, Eric. Yeah. Well done, brother. You're the man. I'm so glad that we met, dude, and we got connected on this, bro. My big three, and I'm gonna get out of here and get back to results and selling and supporting these small business owners. Um, one is PartnerCon this week. We've got our big event and our partners in. Uh, I want to connect partners together. Um, showcase this this wonderful product and these wonderful people here at Infusionsoft and just smile a lot with these partners and, and connect again with these guys. 
Um, number two is the move. Gilbert is phenomenal, we're in, but there's a lot going on there. Gotta support Erica a bit more, and not let her do all the heavy lifting and stuff around the house. And then number three, results. Gotta crush. It's October, it's Q4, it's about getting off to a fast start. It's not getting your momentum slowed down. How do you keep momentum going, you guys? You do it by the hustle, like grinding, like Aaron, like Aiden. Guys, thanks for coming and being a part of what we're doing. Monday's with the Mako. Much love, we're out. Absolutely, see you guys. Oh yeah, there's Aiden. There's Aiden, guys. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Peace.